Fan games of pre-established franchises have always amazed me. Individuals working thousands of hours to craft a spiritual successor for really no financial gain or merit, but instead because they love the game series that much. Sometimes we'll see parent companies and license owners even aid the fan game developer's journey, such as in Capcom's Mega Man vs. Street Fighter. But sometimes the exact opposite can happen, and the infamous DMCA violation can halt the project in its tracks. That brings us to today's episode. Perhaps one of the most intriguing fan games in existence is that of Mother 4, a game that started development over a decade ago and has transformed ownership, aesthetics, and vision a multitude of times and still isn't out. The game could undoubtedly be successful, but roadblock after roadblock has challenged the team's efforts. However, even after a fundamental game direction change fueled by the Iron Fist of Nintendo, Gamers remain hopeful that they will get to play it in the near future. This is the story of Mother 4. The year is 2008. The Xbox 360, Wii, and PS3 are all duking it out for console superiority, and Mother 3 is just two years post-release. The game was so popularly requested in North America that fans took it into their own hands to translate the game through creation of Starman.net, a website that would ultimately become the one-stop shop for all Mother-related content for many years. This project was a limitless love affair and the devotion of the Mother fanbase shone through, ultimately completing the full translation in less than two years' time. It wasn't perfect by any means, but it was a passion project, a true testament to the willpower and love that video game fans can pour into a completely independent project. People finally had an answer to the region lock of the game, and it led to a significant cult following in the West. But still, some fans wanted more. Based on the response from Nintendo to shy away from releasing Mother 3 in North America, the community of Starman.net knew that the likelihood of the franchise getting a new installment anytime soon was extremely unlikely. Shigesato Itoi, the creator of the Mother series, perhaps said it best when interviewed, Mother 4 is not happening. Well, now what? The Mother fanbase strikes again, this time in the form of an all-new fan game. Chase Chaisu Garetta posted on the Starman.net forums back in 2008 about an upcoming fan project he was launching. The goal was to have his game emulate as close to a real Mother game as possible. Everything from the music, to the sprites and clay character models, to the battle system. If Mother 4 was an impossibility according to Itoi, Chase wanted to take matters into his own hands to ensure the Mother series could continue on in some sense. Chaisu's mission statement was made clear with his initial post, requesting that anyone with extensive game development experience was welcome to join the project, but was ultimately firm in ensuring that the talent acquired for the project had a deep desire to finish the game. He even made mention to the fact that other members of the forum had compared him to Itoi himself with his high ambition and creativity, but brushed the compliments off saying he had to prove himself first. It was undoubtedly a lofty fan project, not only from a development perspective, but from a legacy standpoint as well. The Mother fanbase was mostly supportive, but many still doubted whether a team formed of fans could really pull this kind of a thing off. However, the project kicked into high gear as more team members joined the cause. Chase's brother Zach was there from the beginning, helping with much of the creative direction, and the groundwork for the game was laid. Mother 4 was set in the year 1970X, and followed the adventures of Travis, an ordinary boy with an interest in baseball and a propensity for daydreaming. Meryl was a headstrong, eager, and rather reckless girl with psychic powers. Floyd was a street smart and self-confident boy with a charismatic nature, and Leo, a taciturn psychic and leader of a biker gang. You know, because there has to be that one character. Their goal was to thwart the evil intentions of the mysterious group known as the Modern Men, the cause of many strange and dangerous happenings throughout the country of Pleiades. Pleiades. 
Ple ple plays. Okay, we're gonna ignore that for now. The early screenshots and music clips had that same mother flair with a few of their own unique additions. The game was set to also feature a day and night mechanic, much like Pokemon, with the time of day dictating different results with gameplay concerned. As previously mentioned, the combat was also paying heavy respect to the Mother series, featuring the standard rolling HP meter, but also had a few flares of its own. The most notable being the extra turn ability. Each character had a meter that filled in combat, which when filled up all the way, activated a turn. Groovy! This is similar to the limit breaks and other buffs common to more traditional RPGs. The sprite work, however, was probably one of the most impressive aspects of the entire game. Despite being created using Microsoft Paint, the way the characters were crafted looked like something directly out of the Mother Universe. The environments were also uncanny, and the enemies and battle backgrounds always struck me with a bit of nostalgic flair. Updates were common, and things really seemed to be rolling in the early days. But, rather early into their ambitious project, the team began to encounter some rather large limitations. The game had started development from within RPG Maker XP, but Chase and Zack quickly realized that a change was necessary if they wanted to see their desires come to fruition. RPG Maker was that program that so many teenagers used to conceptualize a game, but never really had the capability of producing something complex and fully fleshed out. Eventually, Chaisu moved the game's engine from RPG Maker XP to Game Maker. A little bit better. <coughs> After the conversion of the new engine, the team began to expand as well, causing the project to grow bigger than anyone had previously anticipated. Well, except for maybe Chase himself. Chaisu recruited Dave and Zephyrus to help with the game around late 2008. These names would become rather important to the project for many years to follow. There were also many other recruits, including a logo artist known as Leo the Professional, who the character Leo is actually named after and based on, and Chaisu decided to take the reins serving as a director, composer, writer, scripter, and many other jobs. He was the heart and soul of the game, but things were definitely evolving around him, and the project took on a life of its own. Eventually, the team also came across some limitations using Game Maker, and the game's engine was basically made from scratch using a custom SDL engine written in C++. Around this time, other members of the current core team began to join, such as Pick, now the lead artist, Gabe, now a spriter, Danny, and Shane, who were music composers. The art style of the game also began evolving pretty quickly, and it started to resemble something transcending Mother 3. What started as a mother spiritual successor looked less and less like the real thing each and every day. Was Chaisu's vision getting lost in the grind? Could he still see the forest through the trees? had gone by. It was now 2012 and the Mother 4 fan project was at the peak of its creation. However, the team seemed to be in some sort of development funk they just couldn't shake. There were plenty of times significant headway would be made, then a mistake would cost hundreds of hours of work, and it would just go back to the beginning. Back to the drawing board yet again. People on staff began to lose focus, considering the project was eating up almost all of their free time, and to see no real headway, that's gotta be discouraging. Another bump in the road occurred when Chaisu himself announced that he would be leaving the project. He cited not having the necessary amount of time to devote to the project anymore, he wasn't the only one. Other members of the team who shared Chaisu's sentiments jumped ship, and Zephyrus ended up taking over. So was the project ever finished? How could the team continue on without Chaisu's vision of Mother 4? Would the game ever end up coming out? Or was the inevitable on the horizon? Ironically, there were actually many who really accepted Chaisu's departure with open arms. Some fans and members of the team found him to be difficult to deal with or even immature at times. So in some ways, it was a breath of fresh air to a lot of the community. His vision was still present, but the rest of it was gone. With Chase and other members' departure from the Mother 4 project behind them, the team moved forward and began to siphon in some new recruits. 
It was around this time that Pastel, now the creative director for the project, and Zane, now the community manager, were introduced to the team. But not even a year after Chaisu left the project, another major player did the same. Just before 2013, Zephus could not commit any more time to the project, so Pastel led in his stead. And let's just say, according to the sporadic development updates I could find on Reddit, he did his fair share of change-ups. As project lead, he scrapped most of the past assets for the game and started from near scratch again. This upset some members of the team and even caused others to quit, but most of the remaining team knew that this was inevitable to ensure the project succeeded. And in hindsight, changes that Pastel made actually ended up working quite well, as this remains the groundwork for the current version of the game. So fans who were eagerly tracking the development of Mother 4, there began to be kind of a problem. People will start to get impatient after a while. The project was now over five years old and starting to rebuild yet again. Was Mother 4 becoming vaporware? Would the game ever actually come out? Driven by the reaction of the community, Pastel and the dev team launched this official Mother 4 website in August of 2013, showcasing the game in its current state, and it garnered some oohs and ahs from around the world, and caught the attention of gamers outside the Mother fandom bubble as well. When the site went live, the team for the first time posted footage of the game in motion with a teaser trailer. The game was set for release in December of 2014, however, it was ultimately postponed until sometime in 2015. But hey, I mean the project had some major headway, a release date, and had mother fans from around the world salivating at the potential masterpiece awaiting them, including myself. But then again, on June 3rd, 2015, disaster. The team announced that they would not be able to meet the June deadline due to significant development challenges. Again. Because of this, they hired new spriters and developers to help finish the game. The team also agreed to make updates every other week centering around the game's development. At this time, the team decided that no public deadlines for the game's release would be warranted, and that was probably a good move and kind of a bad one at the same time. I mean, on one hand, it made sense not to set a specific release date when you basically had nowhere near a finished product and try to avoid people getting their hopes up. But on the other hand, it meant that the game had no sunset clause. When was it going to be done? Would we ever see a finished product? Updates were pretty constant at the beginning, but over time things began to slow down and eventually, not much of anything at all. What the heck was going on? Well you see, there's a certain history when it comes to fan games involving Nintendo's first party IPs. A perfect example of this was the game AM2R, another Metroid 2 remake. This was undoubtedly one of the most hyped fan projects ever, as the Metroid series had begun to be cast aside by Nintendo in favor of more popular gaming franchises. A fan named Milton Gosti took things into his own hands and started development on a remake of Metroid 2 from the Game Boy. The game's development took quite a long time, and just days after the official release, Nintendo ordered DMCA takedowns on the many websites that hosted it. Milton promised to continue the development privately, but even that was stopped when Nintendo approached him directly. To make matters worse, Nintendo released their own similar game on the 3DS, which many fans noted to be inferior to the fan-made version. But this certainly isn't the only example of Nintendo taking down fan projects of their IPs. Other games like Pokemon Uranium, Super Mario 64 HD, and various Zelda fan titles have suffered a similar fate. 
Many may ponder why Nintendo would go to such lengths to stop fans from continuing the legacy of the franchises, especially if they weren't making any money off them or even if Nintendo failed to do anything with the franchise. But the fact remains that Nintendo was well within the realm of legality to do so. So that brings us to Mother 4. Would Nintendo invoke the same punishment on the development team? Even though it is a franchise that Itoi and Nintendo had gone on record saying they would not continue? Unfortunately, the story of AM2R and others were enough for the team to consider scrapping the project entirely. On March 1st, 2017, the Mother 4 team announced that the game was in the process of a complete rebrand. The process of rebuilding from the ground up had begun, yet again. In June 2017, the devs started the process of removing, replacing any sprites, music, text, story, and features that are trademarked or patented by Nintendo. Unfortunately, some items had to be completely scrapped through the understandable fear that the team had for a potential DMCA violation. Imagine pouring thousands of hours into something as a passion project, only to rebuild everything again. The rebrand, albeit necessary, sparked some serious hatred and discontent from the Mother 4 community. Just scrolling through the Mother 4 Reddit page is truth of that. People were upset, frustrated that they may never get the Mother sequel they dreamed about. Updates began to be even more scarce, and the project went mostly dark for a few years. Then, on January 2nd, 2020, the following trailer was released. Oddity was born, and honestly, it looked gorgeous. The first item to note was the banger of a track playing in the back of the trailer. It really sets the tone for what could be with this game. The sprites all looked polished, and the way they were incorporated into the turn-based battle screen was something I had never seen before, and it honestly looked impressive. There also appeared to be a villainous character whose appearance is strikingly similar to that of Porky Mitch from the Mother series. I enjoyed that small homage. Most of all, Oddity appeared to have finally grown up and transcended its mother roots, framing an entirely new personality that is both exciting and unique. Although it's been over a year now, I am confident that the team will actually be able to finish this game. A new subreddit and Discord has been opened up to track development, and although the updates are just as scarce as they've ever been, I am confident that we will see something within the next year or so. The game just has an entirely new identity, but much like the way Undertale sparks that earthbound nostalgia in me, Oddity does the same. 
The sprites are attractive, the music is incredible, and the setting is one that is mostly unexplored, and I think it adds a certain uniqueness to the game that should help it. There are definitely some unexplained things about the project, but the fact that we were able to see what looked like a polished game in Alpha gives me a lot of hope for the future. And now, with the weight of Nintendo off the team's shoulders, I think development is more than likely roaring. Let's also consider how indie developer friendly Nintendo has gotten over the past few years. It's much easier to envision your game getting recognized and becoming successful, and some of the most influential games of the last decade started as indie projects. The future is bright for Oddity, and as updates continue to trickle in, I think my 12 years of hype will sustain until the project is finished. As the trailer states itself, it'll be out when it's ready. While we may never truly get a proper Mother sequel, Oddity may be as close as it'll get. In 2015, Itoya said it best when asked if Mother 4 was ever possible for him to release. Among big time pop stars, if they, you know, put out 10 albums, around the fourth album, they can't make very good songs. The albums sell, but everyone at the concerts wants to hear songs from those first three albums. A bold statement, but it really speaks to the lack of desire he has to ever want to release a Mother 4 game. Then again, he did say he wants to be the player. So perhaps, Itoya himself will play Oddity one day. I wonder what he'll think. <laughs>